Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. We're here to discuss section 3.7, investigating graphs of polynomial functions. As usual, we're going to start with a warm up, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of an introduction. Then I want you to pause the video, work on the questions, and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Let's just take a look at these. The instructions say identify all the real roots of each equation. Based on the rational root theorem, we know that we can find all the possible rational roots p over q using the factors of the constant for p and the factors of the leading coefficient for q. And that's what we're going to do. So our limitation is that we're not really going to find all the real roots unless they're rational, but we are going to find all the rational real roots of each equation. So if there are some that you graph on the graphing calculator and it appears that they have more real roots, but you don't come up with that many when you actually do it algebraically, it's because they would be irrational roots. Okay, and then let's just take a quick look at number four. We had talked about u substitution. This one is a prime candidate for u substitution if you recognize that it looks like a quadratic, but it's not a quadratic, it's a fourth degree. Then hopefully you saw that you need to use a u substitution. So go ahead and pause the video and turn it back on when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, here are the answers to the four questions. If you got one or more wrong, Try it again, now knowing what the answers are, and also make a notation with a post-it. Write it down in your notes so that we can take a look at it in class as needed. Okay, let's take a look at our objectives. We're going to use the properties of n behavior to analyze, describe, and graph polynomial functions, and identify and use maxima and minima of polynomial functions to solve problems. We have some new behavior in this, or I'm sorry, new vocabulary in this section. N behavior is one of them. N behavior is exactly what it sounds like. If you look to the left at the extreme end of the function, you look to the right at the extreme end of the function, what is it doing? Is it going up, increasing, or is it going down, decreasing? Then we have turning point. Turning point is where we see the function go from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And this is sort of like what we see in a quadratic, where if we if you just think about the parent function of a quadratic, it decreases, it hits the vertex, which is the origin for the parent function, and then it starts increasing. So that vertex is a turning point. We have something similar in polynomial functions. It's not just a single one like we have in a quadratic. We may have many and therefore we may have many turning points in a function in a polynomial function. Now, local maximum and local minimum. We know that functions that increase to positive infinity in the y direction can't really have an absolute maximum because they keep on going into positive infinity. But within specific boundaries, they may have a local maximum, and that's where we're going to see the local maximum or the local minimum depending on what the curve is doing. We're going to see those from between specific boundaries in these polynomial functions at the vertices. Okay, polynomial functions are classified by, by their degree and the graphs of polynomial functions are classified by the degree of the polynomial. Based on the degree we see different shapes and different characteristics. You can see here that degree 1 is a linear function and quadratic function is degree two. So we have one turning point where in a linear function we do not have any turning points. But in a quadratic function we have one turning point and in a cubic function we have two turning points. So we see this function, this example, increasing, then decreasing, then increasing again. The quartic function we see we have three turning points and we see that we have the two ends going in the same direction just like we saw for degree two, the quadratic function. For the quintic function of degree five, we see that the ends go in opposite direction on the left and on the right, and we see that we have what looks like four different turning points on that one. I'd like you to go back and label these function based on the degree, just write whether it's an even or an odd function. So if it's of degree one, one is an odd number, so that's an odd degree function. 
for degree two, it's even, two is an even number, so it's an even degree function, and so on. All right, end behavior is what our way of describing what's happening on the left of the function and what's happening on the right of the function. So imagine that you were standing at the origin and you are looking to the left. So as, as x goes to negative infinity, which means you're looking to the left, what's the function doing? Is it increasing, going to positive infinity, or is it going to negative infinity? And then imagine you're back at the origin and you look to the right. As you look to the right, is the function going to positive infinity or going to negative infinity? And so that's exactly how you're going to write it. What you see here is a little summary of of what the what I just said about the leading coefficient and again if the leading coefficient is positive on the right hand side you're going to see the function go up if the leading coefficient is negative you're going to see on the right hand side the function going to the negative infinity direction in the y direction okay so the leading coefficients sign tells you what the right hand side of the function is doing Likewise, the degree of the function being odd or even tells you whether the same thing or the opposite thing is happening on the left-hand side as you look to negative infinity in the x direction. So if you have an odd degree function, the two ends go in opposite directions, odd, opposite, and if you have an even degree function, the ends go in the same direction. So what we're going to do now is take a look at an example. In example one, it says determining end behavior of polynomial functions, and we're going to identify the leading coefficient, the degree, and the end behavior. Q of x is equal to, and notice the very first thing that we want to be able to do is put our terms in order by decreasing degree. So our largest degree is 4, and so that means our polynomial is of degree 4. 4 is an even number, so it's an even degree function. So that means the two ends are going to go in the same direction. Now, which direction are they going to go in? Well, let's take a look at the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is negative 1. That means that on the right-hand side, the function is going to the negative y direction. This is an even degree function, so it means both ends are going to do the same thing. So on the left-hand side, it's also going to go in the negative direction. So as x goes to negative infinity, this function, q of x, also goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, q of x goes to positive infinity. There's a little typo there. I apologize for that. Now let's take a look at question B. Now we have function p of x, and our leading coefficient is 2, our degree is 5, and it is an odd number. So our leading coefficient being negative means that we're going to have the function on the right-hand side going to the positive direction, and it's an odd degree function, so that means on the left-hand side it's going to do the opposite thing, which means it's going to go in the negative direction. So as x goes to negative infinity, p of x goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, p of x goes to positive infinity. If you need to take a look at these, grab your graphing calculator and graph these because that will probably be helpful in seeing what the end behavior actually is. Now just as we started with the function and we wrote down some intelligence about what the end behavior was going to be doing, we can start with the graph and we can write down what we know is going on in the function's definition based on what we see in the graph. In this case, on example 2a, we see that on the right hand side, the function is going to the negative y direction. And we see that on the left hand side, it's going in the opposite direction. It's going to positive y. So we know that this is going to be an odd degree function. We also know that it's going to be a negative leading coefficient because on the right-hand side it does go in the negative direction. So the end behavior, as x goes to negative infinity, p of x goes to positive infinity, and that's what's going on on the left, and on the right, as x goes to positive infinity, p of x goes to negative infinity. Okay, let's take a look at another one. On this example, 
we see that both ends are going in the same direction, so that means it's going to be an even degree function. And we also see that they happen to be going, the, on the right hand side, it's going positive. So what that means is we're going to have a positive leading coefficient. So even degree, positive leading coefficient, and as x goes to negative infinity, the function p of x goes to positive infinity. That's what's going on on the left. And on the right hand side, as x goes to positive infinity, p of x is also going to positive infinity. Okay, so now we're really going to put ourselves to the test. Now that we've looked at factoring, solving polynomial equations, and behavior, we're going to graph based on information that we gather from a function. So take a look at these. Take notes if you need to on these steps. You're going to be following these steps on the next example, example number three, so that you can graph the function based on the function definition. So here we are. We have the function. Stop the video, and based on what you see, I'm following the steps, try to graph the video with the information given. And turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer. All right, so hopefully you were able to graph the function. I went through the steps kind of slowly so that in case you need to take notes on them, you can. And you see we start with either the, the possible rational roots or we could even start with the y-intercept if we wanted to. But basically we've been able to graph the function using the p's and q's, using the synthetic division, using the y-intercept, using the end behavior, and then just graphing a couple of points in between the zeros so we can see what's going on. Now... Those can be kind of tough and they take a little bit of getting used to, so definitely pay close attention when you do your practice problems for homework. Let's talk about turning points. A turning point is where a graph changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. And a turning point is going to be where we have a local maximum or a local minimum. And we're going to be taking a look at how many we're going to have. So a polynomial of degree n is going to have at most n x-intercepts or real zeros and n minus 1 number of turning points. So that's kind of a general rule but we know sometimes we have multiplicity and we have roots that are uh, that appear more than one. So that's going to make it different but it's going to have at most n x-intercepts or real zeros and n minus 1 turning points. Okay, sometimes we could also have imaginary roots, remember, so that would decrease the number that we see. But that's a general rule of thumb. Let's take a look at example number four. We have a, another function, f of x, and what I'd like you to do is graph it on your graphing calculator and estimate the local maxima and minima. Now, estimate just means you're going to use the trace, the second trace feature, and that's going to give you an approximate value. They're irrational zeros or irrational roots so they're not going to be nice even values so go ahead and use your graphing calculator to be able to do that and check your answer below that's for the minimum the maximum and here's the minimum okay we're going to take a look at one more example and then we'll be finished up with our notes Okay, an artist plans to construct an open box from a sheet of metal, 15 by 20 inches, by cutting the squares from the corners and folding up the sides. Find the maximum value of the box and the corresponding dimensions. This is a great polynomial function. Start out with the volume. Well, start out with a picture. And then the volume of a box. Remember, it's an open box. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer. So using the second trace feature on your calculator, we find the maximum of the volume, which is 379.04, and the x value is 2.83. That allows us to plug the x back in so that we can find the width and the height, so then we'll have all three dimensions of this open box. That is it for section 3.7. I'll see you back for section 3.8.